Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're pleased to have uh, one of our uh, prestigious customer, Medesca, with us today, um, talking about the local. So we'll first go to a round of introduction. So I'm Sebastian. I'm one of the uh, founder of Solution Metrics, a proud Croatia partner. I also uh, have Mark Olivier with us on, the, on this Zoom. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. I'm uh, Marc Olivier Bordeaux. I'm marketing manager at the Solutions Metrics. Uh, we're really happy to be here today for the uh, Life Science Day uh, with Creatio Accelerate. So, uh, hello everyone. Great, thank you. And Fabien, you can introduce yourself. Hi, so my name is Fabien. I'm working as a CRM consultant, product owner, and I'm leading the implementation of Creatio at Mediska. So, yeah, Perfect. that's it. Thank you so much. And we're privileged to have uh, James with us today. So, uh, James, if you uh, can introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm James. I've been uh, working with Mediska as our director of IT for quite a few years now and recently came on board with uh, Solution Metrics and the team to put Croatia in at Mediska. Quite a big journey for us and we're, we look forward to talking about it. Excellent. Thank you so much. So first, maybe uh, we, we can start with uh, some, you know, what, what Mediska, uh, the, you know, the, the offer and what, what's, what's the business first? Sure. Sounds, sounds good. So uh, Mediska, we supply products to, to pharmacies, specifically compounding pharmacies. So it's a very important market in, in the world. It's uh, pharmacists that tailor make medications for their customers' needs. So it's, it's not big pharma, it's very niche. And because of that, we were looking for a niche product to help us. And it, it was a challenge in the past to find someone who could fit our needs perfectly. Great, great. So maybe we can uh, start by um, explaining what you're doing with the Creatio solution and how you use it internally. Okay, um, you mentioned we just recently went live. Uh, we've been working on it now for a few weeks, uh, well, a couple of months actually. And the, the main goal was to get everyone at Mediska into one system. So it was very fragmented. We had our, our main ERP system. We had our, our, our CRM, more of a contact manager. We have our production systems. So the day in the life of a Mediska sales rep or customer support agent was jumping all over the place throughout these systems. And we got to a point where we want to have our employees live in one system. And that would mean eliminating a bunch of inefficiencies, having everything at their fingertips, plus providing that customer 360. So make it better for our customer and our employee. That was what our main use case was. How do we get everyone into one system? And Creatio seemed to match that bill for us when we were looking. Perfect. And if I remember well, there was also a big use case around order entry, right? So I think you have complex order entry. Exactly. And that was one of the biggest challenges. We have an ERP system which is great at what it does for production planning, purchasing, very strong system, but it really wasn't geared towards the sales rep. So you could get an order in, but it didn't give you any of that customer data that we, we needed. And that's what the sales rep really needs. They, they don't care so much about production. They care about servicing the customer. And the challenge we had is how do we get that integration into a product? And it's uh, a very niche ERP as well which isn't, doesn't have integrations buying off the shelf. So we had to do an entire custom solution using low code and other tools to get that, uh, that, those two systems to talk. And that was, that was probably the biggest part of the project in the beginning was getting that, that step working. Mm -hmm. Great. And talking about low code, maybe we can um, you know, uh, talk about your, your experience with the, the, the low code you know, and how we could fast track this uh, implementation. You talk about complex stuff. Uh, and I know Fabien was your, uh, your, your CRM specialist. I remember having a few conversations about, okay, how are we going to, you know, uh, enable this with, with local? So, uh, yeah, I think uh, it was leverage in, in your project as well. Exactly. And we're starting to get into it more and more now. So part of the integration was more into the nuts and bolts, maybe not so much low code. Now we're getting into those optimizations, which is what we're all looking forward to, the low code part of it, having email triggers, business processes, reassigning customers to different sales reps, all done with a business process low code, which we couldn't do in the past. It was all developer driven, wait for, for the developer to get to it. And that's the exciting part now, which I keep kind of bugging Fabian, like, oh, show me this, show me that. I want to see more and more. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to really getting into that low code. And we are just starting to 
to leverage that power. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, and from your experience, uh, uh, you know, you've seen some so far uh, on the low code, you know, it, it, Creatio talks about citizen developer or so where you don't need to, to actually be a developer to, to leverage the platform of Creatio, right? So what's, what's your feedback on, on, on the local platform side of, of Creatio? Sure. I, I, I've been kind of more of an observer, my developers and, yep. you know, kudos to you and your team because you're my primary resource when I get stuck. Uh, Fabian, the team, they're the guys I kind of sit back and watch them do it. So from what I've seen and what I've done, it, it seems super simple. I mean, drag and drop, you put in a few conditions, it runs really well. Um, it, it, it really has changed the way we think about projects. Great, great, great. And in uh, speaking about uh, uh, the, 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 the low code. Um, so you have the cells in enable in your uh, Creatio as well as your inside cells with take order, right? So those are the two primary right now that are in Creatio, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So we'll have our, our inside sales force, our outside sales force. Uh, we're just onboarding our service department as well. Marketing is in there, but they're kind of working outside of our implementation, not as uh, more critical as our core functions to launch. And it, uh, you know, it, it really has gone quite smooth. We did some tests uh, globally as well. We have a market in Australia. We had them log into the system. Performance was great. Uh, their outside reps tried it. Their inside reps tried it. We have inbound calls, outbound email. It, uh, we, we're really using every part of Creatio right now. That's great. That's great. And I, uh, you also uh, start using the inbound email flow as well, case creation, that piece as well. So really to build a 360 degree profile of uh, the customer, not only integrating the ERP, but as well, try to better serve your customer, right? And that was a huge part we were missing was that 360 when the customer had to rely on us to go into seven different systems to serve them. We just weren't efficient. We weren't doing it. The reps had excuses why they couldn't do it. Now being in one system, you go to that account, you see all their activity. I love the timeline. You see everything in the timeline, sequential, mm -hmm. put a few filters in, show me the email, show me the calls. You can drive everything from that account page, create a call, create a ticket, a, a case, create an order. So it really has brought tied everything together and we keep selling that 360 view as well. And we can't wait for our marketing to start leveraging some of that data. One of our uh, next projects is a new website at Mediska and we'll be embedding all the Creatio code required to track the customer's web activities, report on those insights. So the possibilities right now, I mean, we've got a, a list of 10, 20, 30 pages of things we wanna do. Mm, that's great. And, and talking about that, you know, um, normally if you have to develop everything this will take years but i know by working together we could go faster right enabling again this this slow code approach where uh we can first share the work so we'll coach you on how to do so we'll do some your your team will do some as well so and fr from your developer what their feedback on the on the low code so how e they are at ease they are with, with the platform right now after a few, a few months yeah i'm a lot of our first few months were spent really on that integration. We're just getting into the mm -hmm. low code more and more. So from what we've seen so far, we really like it. It, uh, it has simplified. I, I think a testament to when we look back and what we did from go launch till go live in three months, we did something that typically I think would take six or nine months. And maybe Fabian has more experienced uh, on the creation side of launching projects, but we really fast tracked this implementation and uh, with, with great success, it's not like we put it in and, and there's big gaps. It, uh, it really went well and we were able to fast track it. I, uh, I had a reference call earlier with another potential customer out in Vancouver. And I basically gave the same testimonial that we were able to do things in months that would normally take many, many months or potentially a year. It really helped accelerate it. Mm -hmm. But was it clear for you from the beginning what your project was going to be like, uh, you know, from beginning to end? Or was it the more you do, the kind of more opportunities come in and the more ideas? So you, you were saying you had like a 30 points that you want to achieve. So were those um, ideas already planned or was it like by working with Fabien and uh, implementing the platform, et cetera, that those many projects start to pop up left and right and more improvements coming up? And, and that's a that's a great point. I mean, that's uh, 
we went in thinking one thing, okay, we want to just take what we're doing and get it in there to make it work. But then all the offshoots of that were, oh, well, we can do this, we can do this, oh, we can do this and this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have to slow people down. We have some of our sales reps, oh, well, let's do this and this. Like right now, we got to just get to here and we're going to keep going and going. Like all everything we see, yes, we can, yes, we can, yes, we can. We're saying yes to everything now, whereas in the past, it wasn't so easy mm -hmm. to say yes. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Just uh, just a few words to, to complement that. It's uh, As you've heard, it's a very complete project. It's a very exciting project. So it's it's just the beginning. We did the biggest part. Uh, James mentioned we mostly worked on that order entry. Uh, that was a pretty big, uh, pretty big one. There's, I don't know, tens of connection points. We are loading some tables live from a middleware server that we've been using as a middleman between Creatio and the, the ERP. Uh, it's it's a super connected uh, both way uh, integration and uh, the way we've been able to display those information to access it within Creatio has been great too. And even if some of those data is loaded through code, through actual code and through that middleware, we can still edit the lists. So James can actually then format that data by himself. And he's actually the one who's been doing that, uh, doing the list views, the details. So even if it's coded, the data is not even in Creatio for some of those aspects because we really just display it live. It would be too heavy to load all the inventory, for example. So we just make it available in Creatio. But even then, we can go and rename the columns and you know play with the lists. So th this has been you know giving a lot of flexibility and autonomy. Even for things that are custom, you can still, it's not even no code. It's even just configuring the tool. Mm -hmm. And that's been great. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to go back also from a previous question about the integration. So the integration is there's a bunch of coding and we have great developers who've been doing an amazing job. Uh, Dimitro specifically, not to not to mention him, <laughs> and uh, from our team. <laughs> let's uh, let's give credit to those who deserve them. <laughs> not to mention uh, names, but yeah, Dimitro. <laughs> oh, and, uh, you have another names too. Like, that, that's the thing, right? People people say that, no? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you no, mentioned no, just no. when you mentioned the person, um, <laughs> and uh, the way actually he he kind of uh, architecture and integration, we use low code even there. So there are some coding, some scripts, but we actually use workflows. We use the, the business processes to process those records. So we're using API, and this guy is you know, sending, dropping all, those, all that data in tables. But then from those tables, it's actually processed using a workflow. So even if it's mostly coding, the workflow calls the scripts, it's a kind of a queue, it's calling scripts. So there's mostly code behind it, but still we can uh, see that in the process logs. We can see how, how much time it takes if something fails. So even in the very custom coding integration, we have been trying to use as much uh, low code as possible to give that, that visibility, that transparency on what's happening. So uh, I think it's a good, uh, good example of using low code, even when we do some pretty deep uh, hard code customizations. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely a strong suit of uh, Creatio to be able to process data and trigger stuff that, that where the sources is not even Creatio. So absolutely, it's uh, it's good. And uh, I know times goes fast. Uh, we're a few minutes away, but can uh, maybe we can talk about user adoption because um, for us, uh, uh, you know, integrators, it's, it's, you know, customizing the tool is, is, is not necessarily the end victory. It's having great user adoption and making sure everyone's using the tool. So I think that's a great benefit of low code as well is, is as you're implementing, you can actually get feedback from the user and quickly react and adapt the software. So maybe uh, we can talk about, uh, talk about your experience with user adoption. Sure. Um, we did it in a phased approach, um, releasing into small groups as we went. Uh, I'm not going to lie. There's some users who are anti-change. Let's face it, it, regardless of the tool, it's just hard to convince some people to change. So we were prepared for that. We know those people and, and you know how to handle that. But overall, the adoption has been, it's good. They, they understand it's not a hundred percent smooth process. It's a new tool. And the way we're releasing it in, in sprints, doing the agile, there's going to be issues week one that we'll fix in week two, week two, there'll be issues in week three, but we're at a point where that's getting less and less and less and they see the progress and they see that we're able to respond rapidly with the low code to make the changes they request. So they ask for something in two weeks, it's there. 
something we promised, oh, it's there. And we're realistic. We know if we can't do something, talking to Fabian and the team, they know the product inside out. Guys, we just, we really can't do it. It doesn't make sense as a business point, like the effort to do it, it's not worth it. So we're able to make those, uh, you know, we're able to explain it properly so the user does understand. It's not just like, oh, we can't do it. It's, we're able to give them the details of why we can't do it. But user adoption, um, it's going really well. It's really well. So take out those outliers who just dislike all change and, and we're, we're, we're in a good place right now. Yeah, that's great. So, and you, you, so you can test it. Great show really helped us to, to, and, and it is got to, uh, to make, uh, make, make you more efficient, right? So uh, the efficiency has went to the roof, I imagine. Yeah, we're, we're on that track. We're early in the, in our go live. So, you know, we still, people are still learning where to find things. So not as quick as they, they, they're used to being, but we've merged five systems into one. Mm -hmm. So just by doing that, there's efficiencies right there. Our, our production system, our QA system, our voice system, our email, our order entry. So five into, into Creatio, our CRM. So maybe six, if you're, if you're counting it, uh, just by default right there, we're, we're, we're break even, let's say. So now everything else is, is bonus from this point on. That's great. That's great. Something I would add about this is that there's, I think there's a benefit that the users don't see because it's not on their daily life. It's not just doing what they were doing in these other systems, but it's the probably longer term benefits for the customers because they will receive a better and more personalized service because now they will see right away. I'm just entering an order, but I see that someone talked to my customer yesterday. I see it as an open case an hour ago. And I can now give that CRM experience. That's what personally, when I yeah. think about CRM, I think about the fact I'm calling my internet provider and I want them to know that I called an hour earlier yesterday. And you cannot do that when you're entering an order in an ERP and using another system before to make a call because now it's all in the same place. So yeah. I think that's where that, that CX, that customer experience and I think that that's... to repeat uh, your same story to the two, three, four, five persons no. not having a story. Yeah. It happens too often still today. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's the, that's not the, I, correct me if I'm wrong, James, it's not the initial objective of the project, but I think that using that single tool would actually probably be able to make a difference and have, you know, even better service to your customers. Well, that's the goal, right? Is to really service the customer and seeing what they're interested in, seeing what they're looking at on the website. If they're interested in vet products, we target them with vet products and not with pain products like, you're looking at vet. Why would we bombard you with pain? So mm -hmm. that's, we can try and do it now by looking at BI and looking at order entry and looking at, but now you can just go right in one system. You'll see every email campaign they opened, every click they did, every website browsing they did. Those are, those are definitely going to be the benefits on the global scale, not just the sales reps, day-to-day -day tasks. Mm, absolutely. Customer experience is the post pandemic number one priority for, uh, yeah. for businesses right now. So I just Seb, Seb, just for a second, I just wanted to mention something else. Uh, one of uh, James's uh, uh, team member, uh, sh she's been she's been educating herself actually really well just using Creatio Academy. So I need to mention this because we barely had to do any onboarding with her. And actually, one of my colleagues told me that she actually knows the platform now even almost better than him. So there's no onboarding <laughs> to do. She really followed. Uh, Creation Academy, the same way we get onboarded when we started working on the on the product, mm -hmm. and she's been autonomous. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for now, again, it's the beginning, but I think that was also something that's great. So we're going to do knowledge transfer. We're doing knowledge transfer with uh, with Mediska because one of the objective is for them to not rely on us all the time, but then being able to evolve themselves. I mean, make the solution evolve uh, by themselves. But I think this is a, a little cool success story because she's really barely asked us anything and she's really just followed the, the trainings online and uh, helping herself use the system. So mm -hmm. that was a, yeah, that was a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool experience. Thank you. For I might want to go and uh, learn the platform myself, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So our time is up, but uh, again, James, thank you so much for sharing uh, with us uh, today. Uh, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Fabien. Thank you, Marc Olivier. Thank you, James. Uh, speak to you no soon. Problem, guys. Perfect. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye bye.